Brother Baxter. Good evening, friends. I'm very happy to be here tonight to minister in the name of our Lord Jesus. We are a little sorry to be late on our first sign. The old English proverb that a, a bad start makes a good ending. We hope that'll be so in this case. <clears throat> and now, I have come here to pray for the sick, the needy of this city and its surroundings. I come to do this in the name of our Lord Jesus. I do not come to do it within my own strength or my own name or my own power, for I have none. I only come in his name as his servant to minister to the people. And I trust that our stay with you here will be a blessing to you and it will be a blessing to us. And I will be praying for you while you pray for me, that we will be a, together God's workers in his vineyard. <clears throat> this is my first time to be in this part of, of the country in this part of uh, Florida, I've always had a desire to come to Tallahassee. Today on the street, while the manager and I and my wife were having just a little lunch and we come out, and they, a little girl met me and she was waving at me through the window. She said, don't you know me, Brother Brandon? I said, I don't believe I do, honey. And a pair of pretty little blue eyes looking at me about six, seven years old. And when she revealed who she was, it was a little girl from your surrounding city here somewhere. And she had had her eye with an accident and cut the side out of it. And the doctor told her there was no hopes at all. There could ever be any hopes for her to ever see out that eye again. Frantic, but faithful father said, oh, yes, there is. And he wrapped her in a blanket and rushed to Jeffersonville. I was just leaving my church that evening. And he came in late, probably this time of the night, drove all the way through without making any stops, only to get gasoline. And he I was in the yard and prayed for him, the little girl. And today, she couldn't tell me just exactly which eye it was. It was just so perfect, both of them, that the Lord had healed she gave me a little present as a little envelope and talking to the child. I never thought much about it. I stuck it in my pocket when I got home. It was a valentine. I thought, how sweet. A little girl. I love this little verse. And I, if she's in the audience tonight, I certainly thank you, sweetheart. And that means a whole lot to me to know. And it's about something about friends. And I'm so happy to know that Jesus gave her her sight. After the optical nerve had been severed, free, but it was drawn back together, and God, the great healer, made her well. I believe he rewarded that father of his faith and the little child of its faith. And I trust that when the service is over, there will be many testimonies like that to glorify our Lord Jesus. Now, Christian friends, newspapers and articles and magazines and so forth, has referred to me many times as a divine healer. Well, that, that's wrong. See, I'm not a divine healer. I'm your brother, co-worker with these ministers here. In the kingdom of God, I only pray for the sick. I do not heal anyone. And there's no one else to my humble way of seeing the scriptures that could heal you. Your healing is already purchased at Calvary when Jesus died, just as your salvation was. See, you wasn't saved last year or 10 years ago. You were saved 1900 years ago, and you accepted it last year or 10 years ago. See, and you were healed 1900 years ago, and the only thing that any of us can do is to point you to what Jesus had done for you. See, a minister, your pastor, could read it here in the scripture. If you'd believe it, that's all it is. The main thing is your personal faith and his merit of salvation for your soul or healing for your body. 
the prophet said he was wounded for our transgressions. With his stripes, we were healed. And now, faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. First you have to hear, and where it comes from, the resource it comes from, then you base your faith upon that, and that according to your faith, then it's done to you. And now, that has been the order of the church for many, many years. 1900 years, this blessful thing has been taught in all Christian churches, praying for the sick. The early apostolic church prayed for the sick. All down through the age into the dark age, they prayed for the sick. In the Reformation, Luther, they prayed for the sick. In the days of Wesley, they prayed for the sick. Calvin, Knox, Moody, Sankey, all along we prayed for the sick. It is to my humble belief that we're living near the end time. Or may I make it a little more personal and that thing, we're living in the end time. And if I believe it's time for restoration of the church that was promised that God would send in the last day. And I believe that this is the day that when the word has been preached so much and the day is getting so dark and so evil, to according to God's word, he was to restore all that the caterpillar had eaten, palm worm had eaten, would be restored back again. And this is the day of the restoration of the spiritual gifts given into the church. Now along in that, we're bound to find false things. Satan is a shrewd person. And he works day and night in the children of disobedience. He can impersonate, but a true spirit of God will always give honor and praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, in this, yeah, I've been commissioned to pray for the sick. If you've seen in magazines and articles around the world, through there has started a revival on divine healing. All around everywhere. We're thankful for that. And I pray that it'll just continue and God be blessed until Jesus comes. Now I want to read a scripture out of the Bible. For I think no service is complete without reading His Word. My Word is a man's Word. They'll fail. But God's Word will never fail. So then, in St. John, the fourth, the fourth chapter, we begin with the 14th verse. Let's read what the person of Jesus was here. He's speaking now. He has an audience with a woman, a sinful woman at the well. And they're talking about the discourse of water. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give unto him shall never thirst. But the waters that I give unto him shall be in him wells of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said unto him, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. And thou saidest well. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. In Hebrews 13, 8, it is written, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, A little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye shall see me, and ye is his church, you. The unbeliever never sees me. It's the believer that sees me. A little while, and the world seeth me more. Yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Is that right? That he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we see what he done yesterday, today, he'll do the same and will be forever. Is that right? Now, he 
knew he did not claim to be a healer. Do you know that? Jesus never claimed to heal anyone. He said, it's not me. It's my Father that dwells in me. He doeth the work. See, he didn't claim to be a divine healer. And at St. John 5, 19, when he passed by a pool of Bethesda, there was a great multitude of crippled and potent folk. And he went through that crowd of people and healed a man over there who was laying on a pallet. And we would call it today a little pallet laying on the floor. Maybe something like the lady is laying there on the lady's lap. He, he healed her, or healed him. Now, he, the strange thing was that he passed those people who were lame, halt, blind, and withered and went right over to where this man was on the pallet and healed him, and then went on. And look at the question. When he said he knew, Jesus knew he was laying there and knew that he'd have been a long time in this state because he'd had this disease, maybe kidney trouble or diabetes, TB. It was a retired disease because he'd had it for 38 years. And anything seriously, cancer or something, would have killed him right away. So it was, it was something that was been lingered for years. And when he went over and healed him, why, he went away and left all that multitude of people that was lame and blind and halt and withered. Could you imagine today something like that? Just as it did then, they'd say, why didn't he heal that one? Let him heal this one, we'll believe it. They'd come off the cross, we believe it. Put a rag around his face and hit him on the head, so now if you're a prophet, tell us who hit you, we'll believe you. But he never opened his mouth. He didn't clown for people. He'd done the will of God. That's what we're to do. Then he was questioned, the 19th verse and the 20th verse. 19th and 20th verse of the 5th chapter. Read the whole chapter when you go home. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. For what things soever the Father does, he shows the Son. And he'll show you greater than the healing of this diabetic or what he was, that ye may marvel. Is that right? Hmm? He said he did nothing in himself, but what the Father shows him. The Father worketh, and I worketh hitherto. In other words, he never takes no glory for himself. He said, I'll only do what the Father shows me to do. He shows me what to do, and I do nothing at all until first he shows me. But what he shows me, that I do. Now, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever... His manifestation is the same. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we have gathered here tonight in the name of thy beloved Son, Jesus, for no other purpose but to glorify thee. Now I ask that your mercy be extended to all of us. We thank thee for him who was so lovely to come to the earth and to remember we poor, alienated Gentiles, cut off, without hope, without mercy, in the world, dead in sin and trespasses, without God, without Christ, going to a sinner's grave, a devil's hell. And Christ came and took our place, taking upon him the form of a man, and was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was up, of our peace was up on him, and with his stripes we were healed. He commissioned the people to go into all the world and to preach this gospel of freedom, deliverance. The Gentiles who set in darkness a great light spring. How we thank thee that the gospel is still moving on, and we know that his declaration of words that said unto all the world and he said as soon as it was preached to all the world then the end would be and it's still being preached showing that it had not gone to the end of the world yet we thank thee for the privilege of representing that lovely one oh God I pray tonight especially in the beginning of this meeting bless this man who let us have this school auditorium tonight that the tent was tore up Bless this school, Lord, may it prosper. We thank thee for man who has an open heart towards the gospel. Thank thee for the ministers who are closing up their churches tonight and send their audience out. 
for all those things. Father, we're thankful. Now reward them. Grant it, Lord. And now tonight as I stand here speaking, saying that you're the same lovely Jesus working in your church today, and may this church tonight receive as it was the disciples who came from Emmaus. There was something that you'd done there to me. Just broke that bread and after walking with them all day, they didn't recognize you. But right at the end of the day, you broke some bread and the way you'd done it, they recognized it was you. Now, Lord, maybe there's a many sick Christians sitting here tonight, but we pray that you'll do something tonight for us here, just like you did when you walked on earth. And a body of flesh, the Emmanuel. May you do something in that matter tonight, Father, that will cause the people to recognize that you're here. Now, Father, I submit myself unto you. Now, I submit the church, commit them to you. That you'll circumcise my lips, my heart, for your service and circumcise the ears and eyes of the people that they might be able to have the scales dropped away as they might see it here. And when we all leave tonight to go to our separate homes, may we say as they did coming from us, did not our hearts burn within us? Because he walked with us tonight, talked to us. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. For we ask that in his name and for his glory. Amen. It's our customs in the meetings to try to do everything that we can for the, the needy. And I trust that God will bless you all tonight and these feeble efforts that we put forth as we're going to try to pray for the sick and the needy. Now, we'll bring the people to the platform just as we can line them up and bring them one by one. As I've told you before, I will not be able to heal anyone because I have nothing to heal with. But maybe your faith will raise up into a place that where you can accept what Jesus has done for you already. Now, every healing that will take place, no doubt that much of it will, but every healing that will take place during this meeting, if God permits, has already been done in the sight of God. The only thing we can do is just do something to cause you to say something or something the Holy Spirit might do to cause you to look up and accept what Jesus has done for you. The Lord bless you. Now, Billy, what was the H? We give out prayer cards every day. A fresh brother Baxter probably went through that and explained it all to you. Be sure to attend the actual service for instructions. Receive your prayer cards. You cannot have a prayer card. Exchange it and give it over to somebody who hasn't been into meeting. It's illegal. See? They won't let you get. You have to come hear the instructions, hear the gospel, and then believe on the Lord Jesus and come into the line. See? So now let's begin our prayer line and. Uh, Line up down this way and bring them to this part here. Let about the first 15, from 1 to 15, line up first. That would be just about as many, I imagine, as we can stand. That's H, is it, son? H, 1 to 15. Who has prayer card H, 1? Look, it's got your name and address on one side. On the other side, it's got a, a number and a letter. H, 1. Now, turn your prayer cards over. Look at somebody near you. They may be deaf and can't hear and they won't know what number or where we're calling. H, 1 to 15, let that number stand first. And then, a little later, maybe we can get some more of that. All right, just as we can. Okay. Who has prayer card H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Just line up in your numbers down there. And the ushers and my son will take care of your lining you up. And now, if they're not all there, then if you can't count 15, Brother Baxter, then let me know. There may be somebody dead or or something, you're in a chair, or something cannot be moved. If they're not, when their number's called, you just raise your hands, and someone will help them to get it. All right, now only believe, if you will, those who believe, if you will. Let's all, in reverence now, can I be real reverent? And let's uh, think of this wonderful old song, Only Believe Now, will you? While we sing slowly now, all right. Singing. Let's have a minute. 
dimensional vision of Jesus coming down off the mountain morning. Here comes a man with a boy with epilepsy. And it's very serious. The disciples could do nothing about it. He comes to Jesus. said, help, Lord. He said, I can if ye believe. Find out what the lady's prayer card number is there. What's her number? Fourteen. All right, just leave her set right along this way, brother, and I can, I can get her right. Just let her set this way. That's right, I can look at her. All right. Now, I will ask you this, brother, sister. I do not keep people long, because this is vision. And I, I, it don't take many visions to just wear you down. I'm talking to you now, so I won't have to later on. How many remembers the prophet Daniel who saw one vision was troubling his head for many days? You remember that? Now, when the Holy Spirit is dealing with people here on the planet, then you you take it for yourself. Now, be perfectly reverent. Don't move around. Just be reverent. Now, I want to move this as our... Sometimes when vision is going on, I can't tell how loud I'm talking. And you're watching me, brother. Thanks. And that's the reason I set the mic out. Now, everyone believing with all your heart now, so we can pray now. Now, there's a man standing here before me. Of course, I've never seen the man. I guess this is our first time meeting him. There it is. And uh, what's your name? That's fine. My name is Brandon, sir. I'm glad to meet you. <coughs> Now, we being strangers, never seen each other in life, well then, you've come here, no doubt, for help. If you, if you have, I trust that God give it to you. Now, if there was anything in me, my brother, that could help you, I would be glad to say, all right, I'll do something. If I was a doctor, had medicine, or, or know what was wrong with you, well, of course, I'd, I'd be glad to do it. I love people, but there's nothing within me can help me. Only I represent someone that who has all the help that you could ever, ever get any help. It would have to come from him, and I just stand as his representative. You heard Mr. Baxter, I guess, tonight. Tell about an angel visiting me some time ago and speaking to me about these things. Well, that, that's the truth, sir. And he told me that I was to pray for sick people. That was my mission in life, was to pray for sick. Now, I questioned it and said, I, I'm an educated to the people, but since a little child, I was called for that work. You believe that? Now, if our Lord Jesus, when he talked to the woman at the well, he just didn't talk to her a little while. And then after he talked to her, he said, go get me a drink. And she said, I talked about the well. Now, what he, he was trying to contact her spirit. Now, you're the first patient here at the platform tonight. So that's, what I have to do is contact your spirit, you see. They were both man standing here. God could someday meet God. But... You're, you're also a supernatural being. You're inside of you as a spirit that'll live somewhere forever. Well, here too. Well, if you've got a disease, Satan did that. And he sent me to pray so these two spirits will come together. And then if these spirits can, it'll depend on which one you give in to. It'll either be, if you believe what you're told, it'll be right. You will get well. If you do not believe, of course, there's nothing you can do. See? This is just for a vindication. But me being a stranger to you and talking to you, and then if the Holy Spirit would reveal to me just like he did to that to Jesus there, as he looked at the woman, exactly where her trouble was, she was living with uh, illegally. See? Well, he told her where her trouble was, it was cleared up, it was all right. Now, if he's the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever, you'll know right where your trouble is. He could reveal it to me. 
you believe that? Well, I'm happy to think that you know that. Uh, your trouble is, is asthmatic. Is that right? Bennett, I heard you cough just now. That isn't the reason I know it was asthmatic. Of a morning, you're really, really in bad condition. And now, throw that aside. I want to talk to you again after you found your trouble. You're nervous, which that causes from a prostrate condition. Isn't that right? You're getting up and so forth at night time. Is that right? And you, you have a habit of smoking cigarettes. All right? Yeah. It's safe. By the way, you're not a Christian in the beginning to fill with God's Spirit. You need that. You need Jesus Christ as your Savior. Is that right? Is those things true? If they are, would you raise your hand? Me not knowing you, I don't know you yet, but what you heard me talking, that wasn't me, sir. That was the angel of the law. There it is. Is that the truth? Well, then, if that is the truth, come here. Are you ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior now? I ask him right now to forgive you of every sin you've got and let you live the rest of your life as a Christian. You do that? Stop it. Almighty God, author of life, giver of every good gift, be merciful to this poor sinner man, Lord, who stands here lost, Alienated from God, cut off. Here he stands tonight in your presence, Lord, realizing that something's going on, knowing that the very God of heaven who will carry his soul out of this world some of these days, you'll have to stand in his presence. And tonight, Lord, he accepts your son, Jesus Christ, as his personal Savior. Sick, miserable, wretched, lost, what a condition. God be merciful now. Forgive him of every sin and may this be a night that he'll never forget. Standing here at the platform before these people accepting you as his Savior, I pray that you'll drive the sickness from his body and may he live a good long life serving you well. I grant it in Jesus Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Accepting now your Savior. You are a Christian now. Now go and sin no more. God will be. God bless you. Let's say thanks be to God. Come, lady. <clears throat> How do you do, little lady? You have your prayer card? No, this is from. Oh, you have just a prayer card, and I thought maybe it's just to give it to the usher. Do you uh, do you believe with all your heart? And you. Uh, what do you think if our Lord Jesus was standing here with this suit on? He wouldn't be able to do no more for you than maybe to reveal your life. Because he couldn't heal you. He's already done it. See? He just had to do something to get you to accept what he had already done. Is that true? It's the only thing he could do. Or he can't heal you twice. He can only heal you once. And his stripes healed you years ago when he died. You're aware that something is going on. You're wondering what it is. Now that won't hurt you. That's the angel of the Lord. Are you well known here? Do you believe that you realize that something is going on, don't you? It's, it's the angel of the Lord in the presence. Yes? You're suffering. It's been examining you have a tumor condition. You're also worried about someone. It's a little girl, a little child. Is that right? Is that right? If just raise up your hand. All right. If I, by the Holy Spirit, will tell you what's wrong with that child, would you believe that God will heal it? Has kidney trouble. Is that right? Now, do you believe that God? The Father has sent His Son, Christ Jesus, and He sent me as His prophet. If I shall ask God, will you be healed? Will your baby get well? Come here. 
shall we bow our head. Lord God, is this poor little trembling mother here realizing that Satan has started now to leave that baby without a mother? Oh, Almighty God, be merciful to this girl. I pray that you will heal her. And may her little baby may it get well, Lord. I send her to her child. God grant that both mother and child will be made well for your glory. I ask this blessing in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. God bless you, lady. Now look, when you go to your child, lay your hand on your child. Say, Lord, I thank you for healing me and my baby. And go believe me. As you have believed, that's the way it will be. God bless you. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe. How do you do that? You believe with all your faith? If our Lord Jesus was here in person, He is. But if you could see Him as you see me, He said, A little while in the world seeth me no more, yet you'll see me. I'll be with you, even in you. To the end of the world. You believe that? You believe that I am his representative? Yes, sir. If you believe that, then that tumor will leave you. You believe it? Yes. You've had tumor. Gland. Female. Womb. Is that true? That's right. Heavenly Father, I pray for our sister tonight. That your mercies will be to her. Your glory will be upon her and your healing strength to do her faith will cause this hideous demon called tumor to leave her. Lord God, as your servant, I ask for mercy for this believer. Satan, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, leave the woman. Come out from her. God bless you, sister. I have faith. Go believe him. And if you believe with all your heart, then go for him. God bless you. How do you do? You live in this city? You're out of town. I'm just asking these questions to contact you. It's the it's your city. And we're strangers. I don't know you. But there's someone here who does know you. He knows you when you were born. He knows you before you were born. Every bite full of food you ever taken or water, he gave it to you. He gave me mine. He knows us, recognizing you to be a, a Christian. And in a serious condition, you must have help from God, or you'll be a corpse for very short. Your soul will go to me. Which that part you have prepared for as a Christian believer. But you're suffering with cancer. And that cancer is all through your body. It's in your side, it's in the colon. Is that right? You believe that it'll that God will heal you? Not in just a moment, sister. Let me correct something. Not he can, he has. And I now accept it. Look, just a moment. See? Your faith's got to move out of that. See? 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 That's it. See, I'm I'm trying to help you, sister, knowing that you you must die, see, and leave this world right away. If if there isn't something done. Now it's already done. I'm trying to move your faith up. So you're trying to let you come up into a space where you can be healed because you realize your condition. You must have help. See, and when you put, he can. Just like if you come to me and say, Brother Brandon, I, I know you could loan me $5. I'm greatly in need. I'm starving and have no supper. You could give me $5. You're worth it. You, you could give me $5 if you just do it. That would make you feel good. It's not his ability, his question. We do not question his ability. It's his, what he has done and his willingness to help you. And look what he's done. He sent the preaching, the gospel, he sent his spirit. Isn't that right? That's right. Here, for instance, this your life hasn't been a flower bed of ease anymore. It's been a lot of sorrow, a lot of trouble. You was praying the other day about this very same thing. He said if they come and you got a place to get to come in here, that you believe God would heal you. Is that true? Is that that's your prayer? Is that that's right? right. Lord, now please. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on this dying woman, Father. And as your representative, standing here in your presence, I ask for her healing. 
Now, you said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, doctors have done all they know how to do, but he's hiding from the doctors. But he can't hide from you. You are God. You've exposed him right here at the platform. And in the name of Jesus Christ, they can leave the woman come out of her. May she be well and serve God in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go ahead and enjoy it. Thank you very much. How do you do, sister? You believe all your heart. Oh my, <clears throat> you must believe. The dark shadow hangs near you, which means death, cancer. Is that right? You have much longer to stay unless God will help you. Is your faith up there now? You believe right now. Now look, just that what you feel right now. If you'll accept that to be God's spirit, you shall have what you have. Will you do it? Lord Jesus, confirm your word as I lay hands on this woman and ask for her healing in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Cursed be the cancer that binds this woman's body. And as God's church and his believing children and representing the Lord Jesus, Satan, you know all about this, testifying of a divine gift ministered by an angel in a few moments after birth, I say in the name of Jesus Christ, leave the woman. I go rejoice. Be happy. What's the sweet thing? My husband looks like he's quite young and has something I want. Of course, the baby can't talk. I want you to hear me. I want to talk to you. Do you believe that these things that are now being taken place in the world today, through this great hour of darkness, do you believe it's his a vindication of his being here on earth? That he is he is his spirit is with him. See, he takes his man, but never his spirit. See, he's taken Elijah, Elisha took his place. And eight hundred years later, John the Baptist come out of the wilderness with the spirit of Elijah on him. See what I mean? Satan takes his man, but never his spirit. He comes right down into religious persecutors and so forth. Is that true? Your baby has asthma. Is that right? Is that true? If I shall lay hands on the baby as God's servant while all these Christians are praying, and if I tell the truth, God's testifying is true. I've seen the baby that has a normal condition. You believe the baby will get well? Yes. I've seen you holding your baby when it's having those children with them. Almighty God. They brought to you infants that you might put your hands upon them and bless them. Mothers brought their children. If you were here in Tallahassee in a body of flesh tonight, walking around as you was in the days gone by, I believe the mother's faith would bring the baby right to you. And you'd lay your wonderful, holy hands upon the child. It would get well. You'd stand as you have. Tell the mother what the condition of the baby was and searching down through her life, seeing it's you as a believer, her sins confessed and earned the blood. Then I pray thee, God, to be merciful to her child and realize that my hands is a poor representative of yours. But I pray thee, God, to be merciful. And as I lay hands upon the baby, according to the last word that you said when you left the earth, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, you said they shall recover. Now, in obedience to that command, to this innocent baby who cannot have faith, I lay hands on them and say to this condition, the asthmatic, causing this poor little thing to cough and hold its breath and choke. Satan, heartless demon. Someday in the endless hell, you will be punished for the evil you do. I jure thee now, as I represent our Lord and his death at Calvary, that you leave this thing. Come out. 
so the baby can live and be well. I assure thee through Jesus, the Son of God, whose blood was shed at Calvary freely and spoiled all powers and holds that you ever had. You have no legal rights to hold this baby any longer. Come out of it through Jesus Christ's name. Take your baby. No weird. Only to leave. Are you believing out there? Don't move too much. See, it interrupts when a vision's going on here. And you do something out there and move a little. See? Well, then that interrupts here, you see. It makes it, it, makes it hard here. See, the Spirit is moving. Now, I want you to rejoice. I want you to be glad, happy. But first, I want you to, to receive God, believing, and then after you're healed, then be happy. See what I mean? Do you believe that lady is laying on that pillow? Do you believe me to be his servant, his prophet? You don't have to have any card be up here in the line. Only thing you have to do is just believe. Now, I couldn't heal you, but you couldn't hide your life from me. If God will reveal to me here what your trouble is, will you accept your healing? Will you obey me as his prophet? You will. I'm a, I don't know. You've never seen you. But you're suffering with rheumatic fever. Is that right? If it is, raise your hand. Now, do you believe? Then go home and be well. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you believe? It's like, you know, that kidney trouble, sir, sitting here. If you would, you can have it. You can get over it if you'll just believe it. Have faith in God. That's right. You want to get over your heart trouble, sir? You want to go home and be well? You believe that you will get over it now? You had that for quite a while. Is that right? If that's right, raise your hand. All right. You believe that you're healed now by the stripes of Jesus Christ? Go in the peace of God be upon you. Do you believe everywhere around? You believe out in the audience there? All of you believe all over the audience at one accord? Our Heavenly Father could just keep moving through the audience. But if every one of you wants to be well right now, you can be well. Do you believe that's the truth? How many believes it's truth? Raise your hand. Well, why not all of you be made well? All of it one time. Will you do this for me? Do you believe me now? Do you believe that the angel Lord sent me to pray for you? All right. How many sick people's in here? Raise your hand. All over the building, raise your hand. Now, everyone look at your neighbor sitting next to you that's sick. That's got his hands up. Now, lay your hands over on one another. Lay your hands over on one another. That's right. Now, that's right. All right. Yeah. Lay your hands on the lady there at the arthritis. Lay your hands on the baby. Some Christian believer, come lay their hands on the young man sitting there. He's crippled with you. All right. Now let's everyone bow our heads reverently. Real reverent. I want you to think this in your mind now. Real reverent. I want you to repeat this prayer. You pray it. I'll repeat it. You pray it. I'll just transfer the words that it takes to defeat Satan right to your lips, and then you believe your confession. Now, you that's sick, repeat this with me. Almighty God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life, giver of all good gifts, I, your servant, confess my sins, and I believe that through the merits of thy son, Jesus, I am forgiven of my sins. I am sick in body. I need your help. Give me faith just now to believe your word and to believe these things which I have seen tonight that reproduces your life again as it was yesterday, so is it today. And now, Lord, upon this confession, 
I accept my healing. And I believe from this night henceforth, I shall be well. I commit myself to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let everyone sit real quiet. Keep your heads bowed. Keep in prayer. Now the Holy Spirit is near you. The angel of the Lord who knows all things over the audience at this time. He's like a a cloud that hangs over you. Just beginning to believe. Now, Lord, I receive my healing. I believe that you're healing me now because that you promised it. Upon your promise, I believe it. Now, I'm going to ask God to give me strength to make that doubting evil spirit that would make you doubt or be confused and take that superstition away from you that you might see the God of glory, I'm going to ask it to leave you right now. And as it, as it leaves you, you accept your healing. See, you've accepted it now. Believe it. And I'm going to pray now. This is my part. You've made your confession. It's on your lips. He's got to make good what you've confessed now. So you've accepted it. It's like your Savior. You've accepted him as your healer. Now believe it. I want to pray and break that spirit of doubt over the building. So from this night henceforth, we can have a real old-fashioned meeting. Heavenly Father, I come to Thee for these dear people. It's now suffering all over this building. And as it was from the road of Emmaus, we seen when You walked here on earth, You know where there was a fish that had a coin in his mouth. You sent the apostle to get the coin from the fish's mouth. You know where there was two mules tied that never a man had sat on. Oh, God, you knew where the woman was that had the five husbands. And when Philip came and found Nathaniel, you told him that you knew where he was before he came to the meeting. He was under a fig tree. And you said that what you did then, we should do also. And we believe you. And, Lord, it is that day. And thou hast now brought back the blessings of the former church into the latter church in a marvelous and blessed way. And we thank thee, dear God, for these wonderful things. And as your children are sitting here tonight with their hands on each other, knowing that beyond one shadow of doubt that the Holy